Good morning. Welcome. Today, we introduce Chief Arvel Licking Horse, who is the keeper of the sacred white buffalo calf pipe of the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota Nation of the Sioux. He is a 19th generation keeper of the sacred white buffalo calf pipe, and alongside his wife, Paula Licking Horse, they advocate for Mother Earth, all native people of the earth, and the protection of sacred sites. They are the founders of World Peace and Prayer Day and are working all year round, uniting nations with the intention of bringing back balance and harmony to humanity and the earth. It is an honor to have you both here for the third time at the Heart and Mind Festival. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Um, yeah, thank you both. Um, this Heart and Mind Festival is dedicated to traditional medicine, and we've been inviting teachers and doctors and spiritual leaders to come and speak about the medicine of their nations and of their professions. And today we welcome you and we ask the both of you, what is the approach of the tradition when it comes to sickness, health, and balance? So thank you and we honor you both and we really, really from the bottom of our hearts are so grateful for your presence today. It's a great honor to speak with you all today and many blessings to each and every one of you. And we live on a reservation today and we still carry our tradition, our ceremonies and the prophecy of the white buffalo sacred bundle that I take care of since I was 12 years old. I've been the keeper. So my language is Lakota. And we have uh, the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, Oyate, or the seven council fires. Lakota means peace, Dakota, Nakota. But the, when they came over here, the Western uh, Europeans came here on this land, they call us uh, the Great Sioux Nation because we have a very a large nation and they call us the great Sioux Nation. So Sioux in French means a snake in the grass. And they renamed all of our uh, sacred sites, our rivers, sacred places from uh, see in our in our uh, way of life, it's a way of life here to uh, our First Nations or indigenous people, we have a way of life. We're not a religion. And they outlawed our, our way of life until 1978, the Freedom of Religion Act, 1978. So now we get to uh, speak outside our reservations. And, well, we do have a prophecy for the world today. Since uh, 1994, a white buffalo calf. There's only one prophecy, and I'm the sacred, original sacred bundle keeper. In our ceremonies, our four seasons of ceremony, we have our uh, medicine, our, our way of life that we maintain in this uh, life, sacred life, because our language is uh, very uh, instrumental to your health and well being. So, me as a Lakota fluent speaker, you know, in our tradition, uh, you got to earn that eagle feather. You have to uh, speak the full language to be a medicine person or spiritual leader, to earn that right to uh, wear a headdress. Or only a few people can speak on behalf of our nation, if you earn that right to speak to the people. And our way of life maintains our health and well-being from our medicine, 
or understanding that we uh, work with spirit from ceremonies in our tradition. And that's uh, going back to our sacred sites. Our sacred sites are uh, like a hospital, it's a church, it's an education. Because from the time uh, we live in this life, God came into this world from the star nation. And then uh, we uh, do our ceremonies, being born in the TP, but today, you know, our people are being born in hospitals or we don't really uh, like, uh, well, our elders said that, you know, we are spiritually disconnected because of the lifestyle that we're living in. So, I uh, sometimes have to think about uh, what to say in English before I speak in English because I, I, I'm a flat speaker. And that's who we are today. We are very uh, traditional way of life. And I, we speak to our ancestors, our relatives, uh, in this environment, because we recognize that everything has a spirit upon Mother Earth. And we pray every morning to get up with a good mind, good heart. And, but night before, you know, we pray that you know, we didn't do all the uh, things that control us to uh, find peace. In order to uh, speak, you got to uh, find peace in your heart. So we pray that you no, know, we let go of everything. Even people that uh, have done you wrong, you pray for them. So you don't have uh, that bad feeling. But 1994, the first white buffalo was born in Janesville, Wisconsin, from our sacred uh, homeland, we uh, did our ceremony and went to uh, Janesville, Wisconsin. And we did a, a statement, uh, 1994, that uh, the white buffalo calf being born is a blessing, but it's a warning upon Mother Earth that uh, we are at the crossroads Either, either be faced with love, chaos, global disasters. We're going to see changes, environmental changes, earth changes, climate changes. We're going to see a lot of anger, hatred, no more honorable wars. It's going to be all about money. A lot of different types of sicknesses, viruses shall become upon the people. It's coming fast. And we know that today, uh, from since 1994, what we share to the world from our holy sacred cer ceremonies and sacred sites is happening. So we made a statement saying that we warned that someday you would not be able to control what you have created and that day is here. We have uh, seen a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. We have seen that 1994, we warned that uh, there was gonna be a lot of false leaders, false prophets, only a handful of people shall stand together and unite. But this is uh, needs to happen in this world today, uniting all nations. And we're going to heal together because what has gone on the last 100 years is not very good. And I 
hundred years ago, you no, know, they massacred our people. Holocaust happened, and you no, know, we are survivors of that time. So today I speak in good health and well-being because in our ceremonies, uh, when we speak from our for our people, our traditional ceremonial people, you gotta have a good mind. You can't use drugs, marijuana, drink, whatever put you put in medicine you put in your in your body has to be good. So yeah, throughout the uh, years, in our way of life, we go after our medicine. People of the world tell us that 80% uh, of the medicine and the food come from indigenous people. What, what is lacking is that you know, we don't uh, appreciate it. We don't give thanks. We don't pray with that medicine. We don't pray with that food. And so you're opening your mind and body to unnecessary. Uh, it's, we don't pray. And then uh, through prayer, these things, uh, they can become a uh, medicine, a uh, spiritual medicine. But if you just, uh, go and pick it, uh, you know, and just consume that medicine. You know, it, it, sometimes it does more damage than good. So it's better to uh, really go back to all people of the world, all nations, to uh, go back to their tradition, their food, their medicine to completely heal because this is who we are. In our way of life, in that circle of life that we do ceremonies today, or we do uh, traditional meetings, everything's in a circle. There's no one person higher than the other. So the white buffalo calf woman, 19 generations ago, she brought the sacred pipe to our people. 19 generations, every 100 years is one generation. So today, I'm the 19th generation. And I want to uh, share to our relatives of the world that we are, as many other nations in the world, have our tradition, our, tr our language and our culture. And we uh, respect all nations because we have to stand and respect that uh, sacred uh, life, the cycle of life, that we all follow that cycle of life, the four seasons, we have no choice but to follow that, to uh, respect every, uh, the four seasons. Why? Because the Black Hills is the heart of Mother Earth. From the satellite view, the heart, the Chesapa, the Black Hills of South Dakota, shapes like a heart. And way, Back in in hit a uh, time, you know, they, we, our ancestors never had uh, helicopters or satellite. But we do ceremonies, and we saw from the satellite. They saw from the satellite view that the Earth is a spirit. That the Earth have the heart, the lungs, and. Whatever we do as human beings, that affects upon the earth, you know, abusing the heart, the lungs is going to affect us. And that we see today. Because 
from the sunlight view, you look at uh, the Black Hills, like a, the red, the red floors and light up. It's like an open heart. All the rivers and the creeks and the streams of the earth, of the heart, looks like a tree. And the blood vessels. So this tree of life is sacred to all human beings. And from the satellite view, we looked at North America. Looks like a tree, all the rivers and creeks and streams. Looks like, like this, a tree into uh, what we call Manishoche or Mississippi River that goes into New Orleans, into the big water. So our spiritual uh, connection to uh, Mother Earth is that Mother Earth is a living spirit. And we know through our ceremonies what has happened in the past, what's going on today, and we know what's going to happen in the future. So this tree of life, even Crazy Horse, who was uh, really believed that freedom of will to live and respect the environment. Now he had a dream. He never wanted to sign that treaty, that peace treaty, because now the elders when they went into the council, they said, no, we don't own the land. The land owns us. And Crazy Horse was one of them. He had a dream before he went to uh, Fort Robinson. And he went to the, tell the people that, no, we need to respect the environment and this life of free will to uh, freedom. And yet they put him, when he got there, they, they put him in handcuffs. And our own relatives stabbed, stabbed him in that military port. So, you know, uh, before he went there, he had a dream. He said, he never had, uh, shed a tear. But he told us I had a dream last night and I saw the future of our, of our people. I saw the future, how bad it was. And if it, it even really got worse and that started tears in his eyes. So it was really bad in the future. Then at, at the end, I saw a tree that all nations were standing in a circle. And yet they were praying to that tree. And today we, we took a stand at Stan Rock and we, we uh, stand saying that uh, we stand in prayer for that tree of life, for that many we the water of life. And this is all, this is going to happen to the people of the world. That the water today is causing, the contamination is causing sickness. Once, once well, uh, the water was so sacred, sacred to the people, they used to pray with it. And now today, people are abusing it. And even children are being affected by the water. So, you no know, crazy horse's dream. And I, when I became a sacred bundle keeper, I, I was 12 years old. We never had electricity. We had to haul water. We pray with that water. We use that water in a good way. And so we never had uh, running water on the reservation. You no, know, we were fluent speakers, Lakota Wagalaka, 
to the Oyate. And then we hauled our wood. But everything, you now we respect the energy. The, because we learn about energy way back in our ceremonies. Oh, the earth was created. And the first spirit was uh, Eon. The red stone was red. Uh, so the red stone is uh, that's our first spirit. And it was hot. It was red. The second spirit was uh, became, uh, it was the water. It was cold. And these two came together like this. It uh, brought this uh, energy that called, called Wawaka. In our ceremonies, we call it Wawaka, uh, the breath of life, the energy. And so we speak about ceremonies in, in that mind, the body, the spirit, that Wawaka. So when you do ceremonies and pray, you, know, you have to be at peace with the Creator. And this walk on, you know, we respect that in our ceremonies today. The energy of life. So I was told about this when I was uh very, very young at age with my grandparents, my grandma and my grandpa. And when I became the sacred bundle keeper, you know, we never had a water, a running water, or we had to carry a wood back to the log cabin. It was, uh, <clears throat> we live in a uh, log cabin, so it's still dirt floors. But you no, know, it was a clean log cabin because how you take care of your home is how you, how you are. And what you eat is a medicine. And it, uh, it's about health and well-being. So when I was uh, very young at age, uh, my father, uh, he bought a, a, a black and white TV. And we were still riding horses. We still ride horses today. So we, we never really pay attention to that black and white TV. But my mom, she cooked in the morning and she would watch that. It's called As the World Turns. <laughs> there are I was turning like that, and <clears throat> my mom used to watch it. And we would be happy for her. You know? And that, in that dream, I had a dream. And I was, when we first got electricity, and I was watching that uh, black and white TV in my dream. I saw the earth was turning like that. And Somebody went and touched the screen or pointed at the screen like that. And then the earth was uh, turning here. Uh, wherever it touched like that, uh, it stopped. It opened up like a book. All these people are standing there together in a circle. Then it closed like this and the earth was turning. This person touched another part of the world and all this, this book opened like this, all these people standing in a circle. Now, <clears throat> I saw a fire in the middle. Then the book, like it closed. And the earth was turning. This happened seven times in my dream. And I woke up and I, Next morning, I told my father, you know, last night I, I dreamt about this 
OTV and the earth was turning as people standing side by side in a fire in the middle. He was sitting there smoking cigarette. Then later on, he told me, he said, that's a good dream. You know, a dream, we all dream. But there's some dreams that, you know, it's going to, you have to pray about it. You cannot try to make it happen, this dream. In time, it's going to happen. So I so, said, oh. So from that time, it's always in the back of my mind. I want to, it's going to be this year. This. Then 1994, when the white buffalo was born, I knew something was coming together. So that's when uh, we had that uh, first World Peace and Prayer Day in 1996. By this time, many nations were all coming together <clears throat> because in their all nations, uh, it's not only our nation, but all nations were having, uh, they're talking about their, their prophecy. So, oh, what's going to happen. You know, our nation is just one of them. And we told, told them the prophecy about the white buffalo calf. The white buffalo calf that was born, we should start sharing the, the prophecy of the spirit woman bringing the sacred pipe to our people. 19 generations ago. But we never really shared this to the world. Or we, we can't even talk about it at that time. Because our ways, you know, prior to that, our leaders or spiritual leaders or leaders, we had to do everything in a traditional format because, you no. Know, It was really a hard time. I could not even talk about my family or the sacred bundle. And today, I'm really honored to share the prophecy because many nations are do doing the same thing. And I'm happy. Um, at this age now, but I was very young when all these elders are telling me about all this in our ceremonies. I listen. I'm happy I listen. That, you know, how to be a leader. They, in our four day ceremony at the age of 12 years old, I, I was 12 years old and I became the sacred bundle keeper. He talked to me, went through ceremony. Now towards the end, he put this headdress on me and he asked me to pick up the sacred bundle. And that ceremony, like today, I still remember that day, uh, that day the elders speaking to me, he said, we're going to tell you once but in, in our spirit way of life, no, you, you're going to remember. We're going to tell you once that a leader could not carry a gun because that gun has an energy. Mazawaka. That gun we call sacred. Iron. As a leader, we can't use fall language. The great spirit gave you a beautiful life. So you can't uh, use fall language. You're going to disrespect yourself 
and the people. Because every morning get up with a good mind. And you open your good mind. And that's who you are. You walk upon the earth in a sacred manner. So the white buff, the calf woman, that's what she told the people. Only the good shall see the pipe. The bad should not even see or touch it. You go into ceremony, you pray. Now you, you come to that place in your heart. So I was told about this uh, bringing of the white, the story of the white buffalo calf woman when I was 12, 12 years old. The elders said, no, this is our life. It's not gonna be, you're not gonna see that in the, in the books. Our, our spiritual way of life. It's about spirit. It's about medicine. It's about all sacred life is. And all these rivers, and the creeks, the streams, they all have a spiritual name. All these sacred mountains have a sacred name. Remember that. That day when we are not here, you can share it to the children. The elders told me that no, you share every person as a, a mind. But there's always a, that negative is just as strong. So remember that, don't get caught up, caught up in that. But everything, whatever you do in this life, it, it's in a circle. If you do good, it's going to go in a circle and it'll come back. It'll be twice as good. But if we do something wrong and it goes in a circle and it comes back, it'll come back. And you're not going to like it. So remember that. That we all live in this world. The four seasons of ceremony. Remember that where you came from. Even the animals, we follow the animal nation. For they too respect that this way of life. Wherever they give birth, no matter how far they travel out there, they can come back to the place because that's their place of home. This is where our relatives are being buried. Throughout this Turtle Island, every nation, every family have their place where they're born. And they're, that's where they come back to. So I know where I live and our spirit is. So there's so much uh, sacred teachings that come with our sacred uh, way of life and ceremonies. And all these rivers and creeks Oh, today we look at the Atlas, the world Atlas. And even uh, like the Devil's Tower, they call that Devil's Tower a sacred place. It's like a church to us. And long ago, when they made peace treaty, they said that we're going to, uh, even before we made those peace treaties, the elders told uh, the people, no, this is a, a sacred place, Devil's Tower. Today, long time ago, the elders called it Matkotipila. 
So when you go back to uh, Devil's Tower, you go back as, and look at it as a sacred site, as a matkhotipula. So in our tradition, we have to stop four times and ask the Creator to open that door to the sacred place to pray. And it's a very secret place because our ancestors have prayed there. Bear Butte, uh, the Black Hills is a sacred site. So a lot of our sacred teachings go back to the Black Hills and it's the heart of Mother Earth, the Four Seasons. We do ceremony. You know, you fast forward it, and and uh, I saw this uh, where you fast forward the four seasons. It's the heart that's pumping, like this. and that's our heart, the heartbeat of Mother Earth, and all the trees, the rainforest, and the Black Hills, and everywhere in Canada. They're hurting the us by cutting the trees because that's the lungs of Mother Earth. And all the contamination of uh, water. And I spoke about the, the pipeline at uh, Stan Rock and fracking because whatever you put in your body, it's got to be spiritual. You have to uh, respect that energy. But right now, fracking is everywhere. And it's happening around uh, the sacred fire of uh, Yellowstone. And all this fracking, that's happening up around Yellowstone, it's going to, uh, our life is on the line today. That's what they told us. Because anything can trigger that Yellowstone anytime right now. And all this, uh, we talk about 1994 when we made a statement that uh, we're going to see earth changes and climate changes, volcanoes, earthquakes. You know, th these are things that could affect us in the world today. And we know that uh, the way that our life is, is affecting us, uh, the mind, body, and spirit, and our medicine. And once, uh, like a uh, hundred years ago, that like, uh, in our Dakota territory, it used to be all buffalo grass. They wiped out the buffalo, the horses, and wiped out the buffalo grass and start planting. So we're faced with uh, Monsanto in our backyard. All this pollution that goes into our rivers. And uh, today we are drinking. Uh, the water is pumped in from Mississippi River. And so this is uh, so bad to our, our future, our children. And that's why we have to stand together in prayer for our water of life, our medicine, because to us, this medicine is a spirit. The tree of life is a spirit. But when we go after our medicine, no, we have to pray and go after our medicine. And once we take into ceremony, now we have to pray with that medicine to doctor us. But our, our 
our lifestyle is different. And I, I uh, back in the 19, early 1990, you know, I did this, this elder went to pray in the hospital, said, I'm done with this life and I, I want to move on and be with our ancestors because they're coming after me now. But I want to, <clears throat> I want to uh, pray and ask you to pray with me. And so when I prayed with this elder, now we burned that sage and they, they said that none. When the open the, uh, that door, that, uh, there's some big fans out there, big fans that wish not smudge out that door. And the alarm went out. So they, I was asked to go to the hospital, uh, the front office and like a boarding school. You know? uh, then from there, they sent me to uh, Aberdeen to talk about why we pray in the hospitals, why we should, uh, and I told them we should, uh, they should, we should uh, be able to pray in the hospitals. We should be able to pray with the medicine, like our ancestors ancestors did. And so here today, you now we get to uh, pray, pray with our family, relatives, and most hospitals today. And but uh, you know. I want to uh, say that now we need to work together. The Western medicine, our traditional medicine. We need to respect each other. With, you know, because there's some medicine that could help us. Both the Western medicine, our traditional medicine that we have. So I, I am, uh, all my life, you know, I use our traditional medicine I never got sick, you know. But our ancestors used to do that, you no. Know, long ago, we never have big sicknesses. And in our prophecy, they told, they tell, they told us that you know, there's a big, big sickness is coming. And today, we see that. So, I want to, uh, no, share that, that uh, our medicine and, well, we have to uh, always stand in prayer. We are, uh, we, we as a uh, traditional spiritual First Nations people, we always have to stand in prayer because this is our, our way of life here. And I want to uh, share that much right now, and I'd like to have uh, my wife Paula mm -hmm. speak here. Thank you. I think uh, uh, this topic is uh, medicine. And the only way I could like really speak from knowledge is, is the way I, I grew up and um, understanding what medicine is. Medicine is, it can be from the ground, it can be from knowledge, it could be from um, the air, it could be what we witness, um, miracles um, for the mind and the spirit. And I think I truly grew up, and you know, even what Orville described, you know, with dreams, you know, that's a medicine. Um, to, it's like a seed, you know, to um, bring to fruition. And uh, so both of us were raised by grandmothers. 
and anybody that's been raised by a grandmother, um, it's a different medicine. And it's something that I think that our many uh, people, our ancestors that were raised in family circles and communities, all the way, you know, the indigenous roots, so to speak, understood that um, uh, grandparents were a significant part of being raised. And not everybody has that opportunity today. You know, for one thing, you know, life expectancy, uh, children move away. We're in a whole Western society of, you know, uh, just being away from each other to survive almost, right? And um, and I think that's what's special on, on reservations, even though we have a hard time um, with what government does to us. And I think I, I always reflect on even other countries, like uh, what's going on in Ab Amazon right now, or we'll touch down, you know, the lungs of Mother Earth. You know, part of those lungs are, you know, there's 5% left in, in of the Amazon. It's that tipping point. And those those lungs, all those medicines are are, are there for us, even though it's on, on the other side of the world or, you know, we're whole, it's holistic thinking. And so in looking at, at medicines, um, in a holistic way, um, the way I was raised and coming to how I come to understand. Um, I was being raised by my kushi. It was, you know, I was a little girl, so I was always out there in, in the garden and, you know, she'd always be telling me to pull the weeds, pull the weeds, <laughs> clear weeds so the food will grow. And I remember as a little girl um, having to, um, do a ceremony beside the the garden, um, honoring the turtle, so the the thunder spirits could come and water the garden. I just did what I was told to do, and now I think back and I know that you know there's probably very few people that know that ceremony today, and that um, and I just remember this this completing it and being having to be innocent. She told me, I, you know, the person that does it, and of course I was once innocent. <laughs> it's like very, very pure minded, listening to your grandmother and, and um, just doing what you're told. And when that happened, it, I remember just standing there and watching the thunder spirits come over and just give enough rain you know, to our garden. And, you know, we didn't have sprinklers, you know. So my, my kushi, as I call her, my kushi was very connected, you know, to um, grow our food, to uh, be able to, to, to be in a good way. And so that being said, I think that being, um, being a part of that connection to nature, um, like she was, I I witnessed so many things and and taking us out in a prairie and um, having me pick medicines for her blood. She was, we never knew how old she was. She was over a hundred, um, and she would have me go and pick these medicines that I actually didn't remember till I was with Orville um, to pick that medicine. And it, it's helped him tremendously. And both of us, as a matter of fact, this morning, we're drinking it right now. We, we harvest enough to last all, um, all year round. And, but it didn't come back to me till I was walking up the hill and back of um, his home where the bundle is kept and I sat down and I was just, you know, looking around and I looked down and I was like, Oh my God, I, I recognize this medicine. And I started picking it. And then of course I did research and I found out that it's good for arthritis and blood and 
bones, you know? And so we drink it every day now. But the medicine that she gave me, the pejuta, now I kushi gave me, that's what we call it, pejuta, was at night, um, we had to, we had to pray <laughs> as a little girl, we had to pray and I couldn't fall asleep and we had to remember everybody and she knew so many people and we'd have to wait for her to, to talk about everybody. And if somebody fell asleep, we'd start over. And so it was like, <laughs> you didn't want to fall asleep. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, my sister would get upset with me because I'd fall asleep and we'd have to like start all over again. And so, and so every once in a while I get a jab in a, in a side, like wake up, don't make us start over. And every morning my grandmother would um, be uh, uh, praying like before the sun came up. And that's a, my first memory is, um, is, is that is uh um walking across the the road uh, not the road but the floor towards my grandmother in a rocking chair and um and she's rocking back and forth and she had a blindfold on and she'd be singing and i'd had i i remember the smell but it wasn't until I was older that I I filled my own sacred pipe. We don't use tobacco as as the Eastern do. We use something called red willow, and it's the bark of the red willow tree. We dry. It's a very pleasant smell and pleasant taste. It's not as harsh as tobacco. It's it's a medicine, and we mix it with other things. You know the red willow the um, other three medicines that I, I once learned and I'm trying to come back to that mixture again. And in any case, I, I remember filling my, um, my own pipe and praying one time and my mother came in the bedroom and she goes, oh my God, I haven't smelled that in a long time. I, I was older and I had come home to visit and I go, what? You know, she just said, that's what Kushi used to fill Every morning she had a little tiny pipe and she filled that every morning before the sun came up. And I, I don't remember like her that smell. I remember smoke and a, a smell, but I was really, that was medicine to me to hear my mother who was boarding school taken away at, you know, taken away from my, um, she was a, an orphan. And uh, she was taken away from my grandmother. My grandmother raised her, but they took her away when she was like seven years old. And she didn't come home till she was an adult. So um, that's why my grandmother, when, when I was born, she raised me because my mother was so damaged from boarding school. And, um, but for her, um, it felt good for her to remember that time, even for her, you know, she had to be like seven years old too, you know, and, but she remembered that smell. And so as time went on and growing up, um, she always had me, you know, be careful with water because, you know, sometimes I got naughty <laughs> and I would, you know, water was so abundant and, and we would, you know, have, go outside and we had a pump. We graduated to a pump and we would pump water. And I used to, uh, I think back now, I must've been a tough little girl because you know how big, big pails of water are. And I had to be, she, she died when I was nine. So I had to be like seven years old around there, six, seven, eight, you know, and I remember carrying the water and getting so strong, carrying the water into the house that I used to spin it over my head just to see if I could keep it in the pail, you know? <laughs> and she caught me one time and she scolded me for playing with water. <laughs> and, but, you know, cause it dumped on me, of course, but I got so good at it. You know, I got so strong and I just think of, you know, six, seven years old, 
doing that today. I had to be, you know, many of our people back then that carried water and chop wood and haul wood. We had to be really tough kids, you know? And so um, that's what I remembered. And, and I, and that was a medicine to me, even though she got after me, you know, I, I got, I must've got stronger muscles. Um, and so later on when she passed and, and my mother, um, you know, got married and my stepdad, I used to have to do all this work of a little boy, you know, um, because there was, he needed help. And so, you know, everything is medicine of what we, what we, um, feed our bodies, do with our bodies as in, in providing strength. And, um, and I think that for me, my grandmother and her teaching stories were medicine. And um, it, it was all the time we, our television was, was going outside because she wouldn't allow electricity in our home. Um, we were the last on the reservation and she said that the thunder spirits would come back for it someday. And she was scared of electricity and she thought it was a bad medicine. Um, I remember, um, you know, that um, a place that we used to go to worship, so to speak, where was the St. John's church and the whole congregation prayed in Dakota. And, um, and we sang in, in Dakota and we love coming together at that time because we ate together that was a medicine we prayed together we caught up with each other you know um, people traveled you know to come together at that time we couldn't live in small villages anymore right so we'd make our own village for the day you know and um, one time she used to dig up bitter root. We call it bitter root. It's a medicine. And I used to go help her. And she would just soak in the water. And we still have it today um, on this reservation. It's a powerful medicine. And um, here she um, traded somebody. With, that's the way we did it. We, she um, would have this this uh, man from town, he was, he was a Caucasian man. He used to come in a buckboard and she would give him medicine to go send to different places. And so one day she must've gave word that I needed an Easter dress. And so one day I got an Easter dress. I was so excited and I was be naughty. And I had an iron, those old irons you put on a stove <laughs> and it must've been chiffon or something. All I know it, I, I totally freaked myself out because I took that iron. I tried to get ready for that day for this Easter and I put it on the dress and it completely wrapped around the dress. I remember just screaming bloody murder at my grandmother sitting straight up and looking at me like, what happened? And so my lesson was I had to wear the nicest old dress to Easter and, um, and everybody, you know, would make their kids dresses. And of course she was getting old. She couldn't see, she couldn't make me a dress. That's probably why she sent for it. And they had all these pretty dresses on and everybody's dressed nice. And here I had this old, old dress on. And I was so ashamed and I sat behind her arm and stared at all the pretty dresses. That's all I did. Like wishing and, uh, and dreaming that I could have had this beautiful little dress, right? And, um, here when that happened um when we got home she took uh she took me and and called me over and she grabbed my shoulders and she said uh um how was it how was it for you at at you know easter and i said uh um i don't know and i shrugged my shoulders like whatever and so she grabbed my shoulders and she said, didn't those little girls have pretty dresses? <laughs> I'm like, and I, and I was just like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had pretty dresses on and, and I really did want an opinion. And of course, all of this is in our language in Dakota and, and, um, 
and I just kind of shrugged my shoulders again and she grabbed my shoulders and she, you hardly, she hardly looked anyone in the eye. You know, it's something of our people. Um, but she did this time and she grabbed my shoulders and she said to me, she goes, she said, um, you be happy for other people of something that you think is pretty or you, you know, admire. You be happy for them. And I was like, you know, I've never hear her talk like that. And I was, I remember getting a kind of a sick feeling like I'm being scolded. And she said, she said, you be happy and it'll come back to you. It'll come back to you. And she said, um, and she shook my shoulders again. And she said, uh, remember, if you're happy for somebody, it'll come back to you. But if you're not, and you're now easy or you're jealous. And she shook me really hard next. She said, you will never have anything. You will never have anything. Remember that. Don't ever be jealous. Don't ever envy somebody else because you will never have anything if you have that kind of mind. And that's something that I, I think I've um, tried to teach our, our um, young people at our camps. It's about energy. And um, sometimes people treat us bad. And, you know, I always told my kids when they felt any kind of um, bad feelings from somebody, I always say, don't say anything back. Now you know how not to be, you know, because it makes you feel bad. And just don't say anything. And it's hard sometimes, and sometimes you got to say something, but it's, it's a difficult life, this path, you know, this path we're on that we walk through, um, the choices that we have on these roads. Um, some people find a really good road and a good circle and a good family, and, you know, you adopt other people that re respect your spirit and you have new brothers and sisters and new mothers and new fathers and aunties and uncles and grandpas and grandmas, you know, all of them are medicine that you choose throughout life to make your new family. And, but you always have your blood family, but I think that that's one of our seven sacred rights is, is called Hunka. And sometimes we don't always go through the whole ceremony of oh God's usually to replace, um, you know, somebody that's passed. Um, that's one of our seven sacred rites. So that's a medicine to replace that void, you know, and, um, or you, you know, today it's, if you really think a lot of somebody, sometimes you don't even get a chance to do the ceremony, but that love that you've created, between relatives and between sharing is um, creates that that um, close relationship. So today, during this pandemic, um, Orville and I adopted chickens, <laughs> and I was like, I don't say I shouldn't say Orville. I it's probably I pressured him to get chickens right, and it brought back such a memory because I was raised with chickens, you know, with my grandmother and having to go fight the rooster to get to the, the eggs every morning, she'd send me out. And I had to be a little girl and, and I'd have to bundle up and go out there, and go get the eggs, you know, and um, for breakfast. And so I think that there's times that I just stare at them and I just, I think, um, I think there are medicine that brings me back to, to that time you know, in, in watching them and, and, um, feeding them and taking care of them. And, um, and the other thing is, is that, you know, I think most of my garden went to them. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's like, uh, I wanted to just take care of them and we got an apple tree. And, um, so we've, what has happened with this pandemic, I feel, you know, worldwide, um, Orville actually just made a statement and it made us all think about how, you know, 
even though this has taken so much of family and relatives, people we know every day, especially on the reservation here and in the world, you know, so many people are, are crossing. And, um, but the other side of it is almost like um, we're being scolded somehow, you know, because the reports that go on that say, you know, rivers are all of a sudden clean, air is clean, you know, places where people couldn't breathe. You know, I seen a, a picture of, for, for example, you know, Los Angeles and China, and they did before and after. And, and I, I always daydream and I was thinking of Los Angeles that the last time we were there, how it was, you know, six lanes going each way and honking and accidents and standing on a freeway and how they showed there was nothing. There was nothing on the freeway, you know, except one or two cars or something. And this was early on, if you recall. And um, I was thinking of all those animals that live underground around, you know, the roads, right? I was, I was just imagining them all of a sudden waking up one day and communication, like what's going on? You know, the world isn't trembling anymore. You know, that had to be a big tremble, you know, all these big machinery going every day. And, you know, they were saying they were animals were on the road. And I was thinking they were probably thinking, what happened? Where did all the humans go? Because they were probably born in that, right? Born in this noise and born in this trembling and I just think crazy thoughts and I was like somebody should make a cartoon of that you know like what happened to the people <laughs> you know, for a moment and just be happy and and it's like this is how it is to have no noise or no rumbling and I think of, of crazy stuff sometimes but um and then showing that you know the deer coming out and you know wandering around like where did all the people go and you know of course it's starting to get get back to their normal even you know now the cars are coming back and i just feel like the you know the medicine that this pandemic has given us is is waking up to we need to do something different and um as far as the the we you know we were given a medicine you know, to help people that came from way northern Cree people. And the thing is, is, um, you know, we can't just give that to anybody because people use, they use different drugs. And the warning was it's a spirit medicine that was fasted for. And um, you can't, you know, partake in alcohol, drugs, marijuana, peyote, nothing. You have to have a clean spirit in order for that spirit to work. So that's been a really hard decision of who we could give it to, you know, because we don't want to be responsible for the medicine to go backwards because somebody gave their life and their prayers and their fasting for that recipe and it became a spirit. And I know we're not the only ones that, that were able to have that shared with us. I know other people, um, uh, facet for that and but it brings you back to um respecting the the reverence and respect that medicine should have you know um orville mentioned you know 80 percent of of the medicines come from our people and that other 20 percent is just synthetic and and um i think that even our people i remember when i was first going to prayer circles and ceremonies they would take their medicine that they would get from, from the pharmacy and put it on, ask it to be blessed. And I thought that at first that was kind of odd, you know, cause it wasn't the herb or the mixture or, you know, and then I, I started thinking about it and I said, yeah, you know, because what else is in there that can have a side effect to hurt that person, you know? And so today, I think more than ever, um, we pray for our food because it is medicine. 
and we pray that whatever's good in there can serve us. And I think that that's something that, um, you know, a lot of times when we, even when we're in cafes, if we go in a cafe, we stop and we pray. And sometimes I'll like open my eyes and then people will be staring at us. And then I think, what are they thinking? You know, um, we don't make a big deal of it. We try to be silent for it, but then, you know, sometimes it catches people's eyes. You know, we try to be, um, at least give thanks for, you know, mother earth giving us the food and that it nourishes our body and somebody else somewhere that needs food that it provide them so that medicine can grow. And, um, so I, I think about people that aren't raised that way and and I just hope that it'll make them think because they only do it maybe in church or they maybe only do it when there's a calamity in their life, you know, and it'll bring them back just to a simple connection. Um, I, I don't like to come off like I'm super sacred or anything or super, you know, kawaka. And I know when we're we're asked to speak like this, that's that's something that I realize that people um, right away that are walking with bad medicine, so to speak, bad medicine in the heart um, and a mind, you know, they get critical. And so it's even a point of of trying to share what you learn and trying to even speak out to those that are judgmental to say, you know what you know, you need to cure something and find something and look at what's before you, even in the water, the water of light, mini, mini Wichoni, as they call it, it as it's called. Um, and so when, when we walk through this life, I, I think medicine is all kinds of things. Medicine is friends. Medicine is kind words and uh, medicine is memories and laughter, laughter. There's uh, after at our funerals, there's a lot of times we, we talk about the crazy things that person did and we just laugh and be, and because the spirit of that person is there. And if they, we want to show them that we're going to be okay because we want them to go on. We want to give them that spiritual medicine to travel. Right. And so I think that, um, in all of this, in all this connection of mind, body, and spirit, it, it involves so much more than just what Mother Earth is giving from the ground, which is our life subsistence of water and growth and, you know, um, you know, partaking and food for our bodies, but it's so much more. And I think that around the world, the greatest medicine that I would like the two leggeds to come back to is their own umbilical cords to their own ancestors, teachings to their own ancestors, um, awakening. And, you know, I hear people say, Oh, you, but you don't know my ancestors. They were this way. They even persecuted your people and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, there there's even further than that, further than that, because all of us were indigenous those ancestors still exist, but you need to talk to them. You need to open up that umbilical cord to those original teachings of a people that were chosen to walk this teaching ground. And with that, with that nation, with that teaching, and it may be several nations that umbilical cords go back to, but they all go back to the same teachings of of honor and fortitude and compassion and, and giving thanks and wisdom and um, honesty and, you know, all these, all these teachings of values that um, are medicine through life. And once you open that spirit door, umbilical spirit door to those ancestors, that's a medicine. Because then you open up that, that chamber, so to speak, for them to help you because they, they've been forgotten. They've, that door has closed. And, um, and once 
they come into your life and I feel like all those ancient ones that knew the path and the correct direction on, on honoring Mother Earth and one another, I feel that that's when this Mother Earth can can change and heal because we're in a time where we need to be the medicine for her and give back. And it's, it's holistic. And so I think that um, when we get sidetracked with anger and get sidetracked with, with judgments and we get sidetracked with um, dilemmas, loss in life, you know, all these medicines that were given to us by teachings will help us recover and let go and know that if we lost somebody that they always say there's four deaths for somebody, you know, first it's their, their uh, spirit separation from their body. And then the second one is the death is to forget to take that body and put it into the earth or however this disposal is of this this monkey suit we have and then the fourth death is to um to not honor them in their life and the third death i mean and then the fourth death is to forget them altogether and that death you know none of us in our family should ever suffer and so those are the things that feed us as we walk through life and as we um, try to make sense of what we're going through, especially during these times and how we're going to change it around. And, you know, I, I, I'm on Facebook and, and I, I made a post this morning because I was thinking about um, listening to Orwell and listening to different people of, and my brother up in, in Chisasabi um, Quebec is this, the the miracles that we've witnessed. Um, I have a son that's a man now that, and I remember this man that just passed, and I remember witnessing him um, come into the hospital and kicking the doctor out and telling him that you know he was just telling me I was going to lose my son because he drank a whole bottle of Tylenol. That's before they had those protective caps. And my mother was watching him and didn't know I had a bathroom. And I didn't shut the, the Tylenols. And it was a big bottle. And um, he just told me, you know, ma'am, your, your son's not going to make it. It was, you know, three minutes of seizures every minute. And this man came in and started doing his ceremony. And I and his wife were praying and um and all of a sudden he took it he took that seizure and um and my son just did this whole almost like a bow up off the bed when he did that and and dropped down like something went in him and um even though he was all you know he's only two years old and bloodshot eyes and veins he um stared at me and he said mama That to me is medicine. And um, I know that that power exists. And I'm, I thought of him this morning, that man that just passed and how he, he walked through life and how he was shown different things and how he changed, how he, um, how he was given different roads and tests as a medicine person and and how sad i became how he started you know in his older age really being confused and um but i still no matter what he gave me that and i today i said um i'm not trying to be what calm but um, just, I've just witnessed so many miracles that I don't, I really believe we could change things together.
you know, but it's going to take all of us. And so this morning I, I was thinking about him and his journey that he has to make. And the discussion I had with my brother last night, you know, about medicine people and how they get egotistical, how they get full of themselves, how they, you know, Orville always talks about that sacred hoop where nobody is above one another, you know, that we're all equal. And only the sacred things that are given to us are in the center as medicines. And, you know, if we could all come to that place of, of going back to those original teachings and what they really mean, not just saying them and teaching our kids forgotten things, you know, because the energy that exists here today, you know, we're really destroying each other. And um, we're really destroying ourselves when we get full of ourselves, when we get narcissistic, <laughs> you know, and I think that's a, I think narcissism is a big medicine, <laughs> to be honest, it's a disease of the mind, right? And people um, just get too full of themselves, and they just put themselves above each other. And it's, it's a destruction. Um, so it, I'm sorry I'm getting emotional, but I, I, it, it was a heavy subject last night and this morning in my, in my heart, my spirit. And I and Orville have been making a, um, a, a time in the morning before the sun comes up and going outside and praying about this, the people that are, because we get so many calls, somebody's in a hospital or somebody's dying or somebody's gone and they want him to come to the funeral and and you know it's just for the immediate family and you know and you want to be able to contribute and I almost feel that the send-offs for the people that have gone and the ones that are here in the hospital are getting so many prayers like never before because we're staying home and we're back to, you know, to those original teachings. And so we go outside and we offer tobacco and we say our prayers. And before the sun comes up and pray for a good day. And and I feel, I, I just think, you know, maybe if everybody did that, you know. Um, of course, we, we asked for June 21st, you know, for global global healing and, you know, to pray for Mother Earth. But if we could get up every morning and and pray together, you know, and even if a morning is a different time on the other side of the world, that prayer would just continue, right? And so, you know, and then uh, then you don't want to be some dictator saying, you got to get up every morning, you know. You want somebody to find that space too. But those were our original teachings that my Kushi taught me and Arvel's teachings who she taught him, you know, was to get up before the sun. And, and it, when you're younger, you know, you want to sleep all day. <laughs> you know, you're still, still growing. And, you know, your grandma takes you outside and half asleep. Of course, she lets you go back to bed. But, um, but nonetheless, um, medicine is so vast and so um, holistic and, has many faces and uh, I want to thank you for having us and uh, spending time together and it's good to see your beautiful face and I know this is a pre-recorded thing and so mm -hmm. anybody that's watching this in the future here um, just know we're we're with you and we're still praying for you too good talk yes Thank you both so much. Um, we care deeply and your words are, they're sacred to us. Um, this is why the Heart and Mind Festival just invites you both to continue coming. Uh, we are learning that the ceremonies of the original people of the world are keeping the world in balance. And the prayers of our spiritual leaders are keeping humanity in balance. And so we acknowledge that and we always support you. Whatever you need from us, we're here. And 
Uh, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And um, I'm sure everyone that's going to be able to listen to this recording uh, feels the same. So thank you both. And we pray for you. And you're always in our minds and our hearts as we kind of continue this year, wondering what's going to happen. But um, we're always joining you in prayer. Thank you. Thank you for having us again. Okay.